Hello guys and welcome to this new machine learning tutorial. In today's video we are going to talk about features engineering and its importance in data science. Features engineering is about creating the most appropriate features from input variable to solve problems specific to a field of activity thanks to machine learning. As we can see here from this pipeline, we first collect the raw data from different sources. After that, we perform features engineering techniques to extract the best from the data that will fit with the machine learning model. We have mainly six techniques in features engineering. We have one, a hot encoding for categorical data, feature scaling for numerical data, handling missing values, handling outliers, features extraction, and binning. So we start by one hot encoding. One hot encoding consists of converting categorical variables into a binary representation in order to improve the model's efficiency. As you can see here in this table, we represent each variable with a vector in which only one feature is equal to one and the remaining bits are equal to zero. This representation makes the training data more useful and the machine learning model performs better comparing to labels. In Python, we can use the scikit-learn package to import the one hot encoder function. As you can see here in this code, we first import NumPy, then we import one hot encoder from scikit-learn.preprocessing. We create our encoder and we define our list. As you can see here, we reshape the list to a 2D array in order to use it in our encoder. Once we have trained our encoder on our list, we can transform our data as we can see here in this line of code. So encoder to transform, we transform a high, low, and medium into vectors and this representation is called one hot encoder. As you can see here, the result is an array and it is ordered alphabetically. So we have a high, which is one zero zero, low, which is zero one zero, and medium, which is zero zero one. Then we have feature scaling for numerical data. Feature scaling is a technique to standardize and normalize the features in a fixed range to reduce the variance effect and prevent overfitting so that the machine learning model performs better. We have two techniques. We have normalization and we have standardization. In normalization, we have two methods. The first method consists of squeezing all features values to be within the range 0 and 1. As you can see here from this formula, we subtract the minimum from our variable and we define by the difference between the maximum and the minimum in our data set. We can also use scikit-learn to import the min max scalar as the following. We define our scalar. We have our list that we are going to use in our training. We reshape it to, to the array and we directly use the fit transform in order to get the results directly. So mainly the syntax is always the same. So we import from scikit-learn.preprocessing our functions that we are going to use. We define our list. We reshape it to, to the array and we fit then transform to get our results. As you can see here, the result is an array which is between zero and one. The second method consists of squeezing all features values to be within the range minus one and one. So this technique works only on the rows and it does not work on the columns. The syntax is subtracting the mean from our variable and dividing by the difference between the maximum and the minimum in our data set. We import our normalizer from scikit-learn.preprocessing. We define our normalizer. In this example, we have defined my list 2 as 2D array directly, so we don't need to, to reshape it. And then we fit transform my list 2 to get our results, which is between minus one and one. The second method of features scaling is standardization. Standardization subtracts the mean of the feature and divides by the standard deviation. The resulting feature has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. You can see here we have the three formulas. The first one is for the standard value and we have the formula for the standard deviation and finally the formula for the mean. We import standard scalar from scikit-learn.preprocessing. We define our scalar. We define our list, we reshape our list to, to the array, and then we fit transform our list. So as a result, we have said that the standard deviation is equal to 1, the mean is nearly equals to 0, 
and in this case standardization does not take in consideration the range as the normalizer and the mean max scalar the third point is handling mission values mission values are represented by n a n not a number and this problem can occur because of unknown information loss of data etc we have two techniques to handle missing values we can remove the rows that contain these missing values or we can replace them with a given value depending on the data set and we call this second technique amputation as an example we import pandas and numpy and we define our data set so we have defined different values and we have defined two nas so two missing values we convert this data to data frame and we get our result so the first technique we have said that we can drop all the missing values to do that we use the drop an a function from pandas so we write data dot drop an a how equals to all so as we can see here the result does not contain the missing values so we don't have the value within the index 2 and within the index 8 because they are missing values and they are represented by nas the second method which is amputation we have said that we can replace these missing values with defined variable the first method can replace these missing values with the mean to do that we use the fill na function from pandas so we write data dot fill na and we write data dot mean so as you can see here in index 2 and 8 the values are represented by the mean or we can use another method which is fill na data dot mode so the mode is the most frequent value in the data set so as you can see here 6 is the most frequent value thus fill na has replaced the machine values with 6 or we can also fill na's with zeros the fourth method is handling outliers an outlier is a data point that is noticeably different from the rest of the points in the data set outliers can occur because of anomalies measure error erroneous data etc in some cases outliers can be considered more important than normal observations we have two approaches to detect outliers we can use statistical tests such as this score dixon's cube test grubs tests etc or we can use the data visualization such as box plots scatter plots db scan algorithm etc the first example that we have to detect outliers is using box plots. Box plot is defined using quarters. So we have the minimum, the maximum, the median, and the interquartile range. In this graph, all the points that are represented outside the range, which means that above the maximum in this case, are represented using points. And these points are considered as outliers. So box plots are efficient to detect outliers and they are and they are often used in exploratory data analysis. The second example is using dbscan algorithm to detect noise points. The noise points are the outliers. And this is an unsupervised machine learning algorithm that is based on epsilon as you can see here which is the radius of the circle and the distance between a point to this center of the circle so all the points that are outside the circles are classified as noise points and the noise points are the outliers then we have features extraction features extraction refers to removing the features before learning to avoid overfitting and to keep as much information as possible within few features we have various techniques to extract the features from our data set and the first one is using the extra trees classifier from the scikit-learn.ansa so we import matplotlib seaborn and extra trees classifier we read a csv file that i'm going to put in the description so this is a kaggle data set for height failure and we are going to extract the features so we extract the first 12 columns and the last one which is the death event is represented as the prediction so we have predicted the shape of the data set of x and y so x is used for the training and y is the predicted value extra trees classifier will classify all the features according to their importance in the data set so as we can see here after creating the model and fitting the model we have the order of the features that are most important in the data set for example if we can use only the top six features like time ejection fraction serum creatinine age serum sodium creatinine phosphokinase we can predict and have a good accuracy for our model without losing a lot of information so this technique is used to extract the most important features or the features that has a big impact and that are more important than 
others in our data set so that we can use them for prediction and without losing a lot of information the second method is using heat maps so heat maps are very efficient since they give us directly the features that are correlated with the predicted value so as you can see here the death event is highly correlated with time with serum creatinine serum sodium creatinine phosphokinase so we have a correlation between these features and the death event which means that we can extract the most important features according to this correlation and we can use these features for prediction without losing information so if we compare the extract risk classifier and the heat map we can say that they both provide us with the same features that are more important than the others for the prediction Finally, we have binning. Binning is used to transform a continuous variable into a categorical variable. For example, we have a list uh, that we call H, and we use the cat function from pandas to transform these numerical variables into bins, so into categories. In our case, we are going to transform that into three categories. We have from 0 to 18 young people, from 18 to 60 adults and above 60 we have old people as you can see here this method is used generally to create bins and these bins can be used in histograms for example to provide the counts de depending on categories so this is all for this video i hope that you have learned new things thanks for watching and see you in the next one